Apple's native calendar apps may look very simple, but if you know how to use it properly, it's a super powerful and super productive app which tops every other calendar app on the App Store. Every event is seamlessly synced between your iPhone, iPad and Mac. In this video, we'll go over the proper way how to use Apple Calendar's app to get the most out of it. There are also some useful tips and tricks at the end to maximize your productivity. So let's get started. This is the Apple Calendar's app icon. A quick tip before we explore the app, the app icon always shows the current date and the day. I have it on my home screen which tells me the date just at a glance. Let's open the app now. The home page may look very complex but it's pretty straightforward. There are these three sections, the top, middle and the bottom section. The middle section is what shows your events of the day. Today is 31st of December, which is highlighted at the top. The middle section shows all your events for the day chronologically. These are color coded, which I will get to it in a minute. You can swipe to move to a different time of the day. You can also tap on an event to view the full details of the event. Current date is highlighted in the small calendar at the top. But if you want to view the events of a different date, you can just swipe on the calendar and tap on the day you want the event to be viewed. Okay, let's move to the bottom tabs now. There are just three sections below. If you are on any date, just tap on the today button and it'll take you to the current calendar date and events. Pretty straightforward. The next one is called calendars. This is where things are getting interesting. You see, you may have different email accounts and each account may have its own calendar service. For example, I use Gmail and all my Gmail meetings are coming from Google calendars. I also use Outlook for personal use and there are some events from my Outlook calendar as well. All the other events are on my iCloud calendar. Apple Calendar app can show, track, maintain and edit all my calendars from just this one app. If you add your email account in the iPhone settings app here, the calendar will automatically show up. Else you can just manually add a new calendar for a specific purpose like work or personal. In this page, you can even select which events from which accounts should show up on your calendar feed. I like to show birthdays from my personal email account, holidays from one of the other accounts and everything else from my Apple iCloud calendar. Once I set it up, my calendar feed will show my appropriate calendar events. The third tab is called Inbox. If someone sends you a calendar invite to any of your configured emails, it'll automatically show up here. You can either accept it, decline it or accept it tentatively by tapping maybe. The event owner will get a notification of your acceptance. We haven't seen how to create an event yet. I want to first show some basics like different calendars and event timelines so that it'll all make sense when I tell you all the options when creating an event. Let's move to the top section. The top left button lets you view the calendar month-wise or even as a full calendar year. You can view what days you have events based on this color code at the bottom of each date. Wherever you are, when you tap on today, it'll take you to the current date. There are three icons at the top right. The first one lets you view your main feed as a single day, which is the default view and my favorite. You can also view the feed as a multi-day or as a list. And if you are in the month view, this view option is slightly different. It can show you the events of a day in a compact, stacked or detailed view per month. Let me go back to today. The next icon is pretty self-explanatory. It lets you search for an event by its title. You can also use your voice if required. Finally, the plus icon. This is where you can create an event. When you tap on it, it gives you all these options. Let's explore them one by one. First of all, Apple calendars and Apple reminders are tightly integrated. You can create a calendar entry as an event or as a reminder. They're mostly the same, except you can mark the reminders as complete when done, and it'll also show up in the reminder app. For this video, let's explore the event option. The top section is the title for the event. Enter any title you want to for this event. One pro tip, this title is natural language friendly. So when I type edit video tomorrow 6 pm, it automatically sets the date and time correctly for the event. Next, I can also set a location for this event. 
adding location can be useful because Apple Calendar can alert me when it's time to leave based on the distance and current location. The next section sets the start and end time, which was already taken from the title. The travel time lets you set the location so that it can alert you based on the time to reach, travel mode or a fixed time. The repeat section tells whether this event is a recurring event. I post my YouTube videos every Tuesdays and Fridays, so this event should be a recurring event. I can set it accordingly by tapping repeat, custom, frequency as weekly, every Tuesday and Friday. This event will now repeat every Tuesdays and Fridays. This is a work event and I want it to be added to my work Gmail calendar. I can pick that in the calendar section here. I can invite other members from my team to this event if required. I will skip that part for now. Everything else looks good. I want to add two more things. One, I want to attach a file from my email which contains information related to this event and also add a note which contains the agenda. To attach a file, I can simply drag and drop a file. Here, it's on my email directly to the attachment section. And to add a note to the event, same way I can simply drag and drop a note which contains some meeting information into the notes section and it will populate the data immediately. That's it. When I tap add, an event is added. When you tap on the event, it has every single information like maps, notes and attachments neatly organized. I will also get an alert when it's time to leave. Pretty neat, right? Sometimes you may not need to fill up all this information, right? You just want to add a quick event. Apple and Apple's ecosystem has got you covered. These are three very easy ways to add an event. First, on your calendar feed, you can long press on a time slot where you want to create an event. Move around before letting it go for some fine tuning. Add a title and tap to create a quick event. Second, just ask Siri to create an event for you. Just invoke Siri and say, hey, add a calendar event for January 1st at 6 p.m. Call dinner at Seattle for one hour. Siri will automatically create this event for you. And did you also see Siri has added all the appropriate information like location, time, duration, and the title. It's one of the fastest way to create an event. Third way, when you receive a message or an email with the date and time information, iOS will automatically understand that it's an email event and highlight it. Just tapping on it will show you an option to add this to your calendar. Here as well, the title, date and time has been correctly populated by iOS. Tapping add will add the event to your calendar. So easy to create and manage events, right? There is one more feature you should know to maximize your productivity and that's calendar widgets. Widgets are these home screen interactive sections that lets you interact and manage events on the go. To add an Apple Calendar widget to your home screen, just long press anywhere on the screen and tap edit and add. Here, search for calendar. It'll show all the different calendar widgets in a variety of sizes. My favorite is the multi-day calendar view. This widget lets me view my next events without even opening the calendar app. It's always active and updated. Customize it as per your likings and it will definitely increase your productivity. Apple Calendars is tightly integrated with Apple Notes and Apple Reminders app. If you would like to know more about how to use these three apps together for a complex productivity setup, drop a comment and I will make a separate video on that. That's everything for this video. If you found this useful, please like this video and hit that subscribe button for more such content. I'll see you on the next one. This is Anjana. Bye-bye.